This week nine NFL picks edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by MyBookie.ag. Right now to honor football, MyBookie is offering up to $1,000 in free bets using the promo code SGP. That's right, $1,000 in bonus bets on your first deposit when you use the promo code SGP. Play, win, and get paid at MyBookie.ag. We're also brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped is number one in men's below the belt grooming. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code SGP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use that code SGP. We're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in paperhead providers and they make it super easy to start your own sports book. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over at aceperhead.com slash SGP. That's aceperhead.com slash SGP. Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green and he is my partner in picks Ryan real money Kramer. What's happening, Ryan? Hello, Sean. Hello. Indeed. Here uh, talking NFL picks week nine. Oh, I thought I'm, I thought we were celebrating Halloween. Yeah, because it's a very spooky podcast. I, uh, I myself wore the scariest thing I had in my closet, which is a <laughs> Carmelo Anthony New York Knicks t shirt jersey. Ooh, does camo. have the does have the orange though for Halloween, Sean. I see okay. you're wearing something very scary too. Philadelphia Eagles jersey. Right. Very intimidating. They scare the opponents great. Great uh great transition there, Ryan. I did my best. Since you didn't dress up for Halloween. No. Why would I dress up for <laughs> Halloween? I it's just insane. We- adults that care about Halloween. I, I get it. if you have kids. Yeah, it's fun. Get some candy, hang out, do the whole thing. But yeah, I'm a grown adult. You think I'm going to give a shit about Halloween? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 pretty interesting. Grown people. We are in Los Angeles, Sean. It does yes. make a lot of sense when you look at it that way. Uh, yeah, I'll be trick or treating tomorrow night. Oh, OK. Do you have any? Uh, that is one highlight you pres- you threw that out there as a reminder that this upcoming Sunday is the annual tradition where we eat, get to eat a ton of Halloween candy. Yeah. Well, the rule is uh, every piece of candy you want to keep, you must pay a tax of <laughs> one piece of candy. So you're, you're, you're teaching your kids about the VIG <laughs> early on. Long story short, I can't lose, Sean. Yeah. I can't lose. The house always wins. I'm Brandon Lang circa 1984. <laughs> Just can't lose. Just can't lose. What he was? Not, and Brandon Lang was nineteen eighty four. No, because I thought it was like a early nineties thing. Yeah, you threw me off with nineteen eighty four. Well, right? now now you're gonna make me look it up while while we were talking. While you're doing that, Ryan, time to talk about a presenting sponsor, MyBookie.ag. They got no tricks, all treats over at MyBookie.ag. They treat you. Treat you right. Great customer service. Got any sort of issues with the, the account? Just hit them up with the chat. Every once in a blue moon, I'll notice, hey, something's not right, something's off. Send them a quick little chat. They get it taken care of. Good, good people over there. And, you know, I think they're great because they support the podcast. They're a partner. They believe in the podcast. So much so that they're the presenting sponsor. All these picks, blogs, posts, podcasts, all... Thanks to the financial backing of mybookie.ag. Oh man, still love me the uh, the custom prop builder. Any sort of crazy bet you can imagine. Let's say you had the Nationals winning the World Series with eight runs or whatever it was. Head over to the uh, prop generator over there. They got a simple formula over at mybookie.ag, and that is to play, win, and get paid. Use the promo code SGP for 100% deposit bonus. Quick note, uh, BrandonLang.com mm. l- looks like it was created in the 1980s. Somehow, if the internet was around back then, uh, update your site, bro. Can't, can't, not actually not finding any information <laughs> on this guy. It's a... Uh... <laughs> Are you looking at it? Please? Yeah, the Brandon Lang website is pretty hilarious. How does he still? Uh, oh, and it's a photo of ki- of him, of course, from the uh, two for the money. <laughs> what 
Wow. Imagine, really... But imagine if you were, like, uh, while you were living, mm-hmm. you were played by Matthew McConaughey in a movie about All right, you. all right. Would you not be into that? Oh, yeah. Of course. Oh. Hey, it looks like he's having a grand old time. That's 200000 on DraftKings, dude. That's, yeah, exactly. That's how big that is. When, when is Matthew McConaughey yeah. going to play the Sean Green story? I mean, I've, pr- I've probably had a better year than Brandon Lang, let's be honest. Okay, Kramer, a lot to get to. Yeah. Of course, recapping uh, week eight NFL picks. A couple of uh, a listener requested a um, Kirk Cousins voice crack, bringing that back for a sound drop. <laughs> Turn that up oh, again man. and play it again, Sean. It's as loud as oh. it goes. So great. Sounds like a dog. Hut, it, sounds, it sounds like a dog that's being molested. Yes, that's uh, that's how you compare Kirk Cousins. Oh, before we get that, we you gotta, haven't addressed our guest. Oh yeah, we got Capper Bear. He's rocking the uh, Manscaped uh, T-shirt, refining the gentleman. Of course, Manscaped made in the USA, and that's why you can tell he's got that smile on his face. He's uh, he went all bear down there, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he uh, bared it all. But uh, we'll we'll be we'll be talking about the uh, Capper Manscaped Bear down the line here in a second right before huge we do dong, that huge dong by the way huge dong gigantic dong big dick capper bear shout out to the weekly winners of the free roll football contest including the weekly winners bird gang 2017 it's a go eagles guy for sure and at uh square money as well the weekly winners in our uh, free roll football contest presented by bet spurts. So if you guys haven't hit me up already, do so podcast at sports gambling podcast.com for your free merch up to $50 stuff's been uh, flying off the shelf, right? Solid high quality merch. Why don't we, uh, why don't we take a look at the uh, all time leaderboard? What are we doing here? Ryan, we're trying to give away $3,500. Who's in the mix right now? Well, Sean, I'm going to make you listen to a lot of names for one reason and one reason only. I am in the top 10. Wow. Tied with tied with 67. Correct. With Tommy Dick and NFL pickles tied for seventh place. Matt steam, Vincent DV 46 Nagels bagels. He's a regular. Yep. Tied for fifth, Iron Chef Brad, Hammer Sport. Feel free to update your names, guys, if that's possible. Like, feel free to come with something a little heavier. D Hoffman, 55, tied with Nacho Libre, 421 in third place. In second place, Mikey, CP622. And in first place, with a commanding two pick lead, Gotti, 15. Wow. Shout out to the Gotti, man. Sean, you know what my bets, my bets for tease is? What is that, Ryan? It's still the Falcons. Really? It's fading them every week. <laughs> fading them every week. Got it at six and a half because I took it early after mm. we recorded. That's the thing. And again, bet spurts, just like a real sports book. As soon as you lock that price in, it's locked in. I know a <laughs> lot of people in the My Bookie Super Contest also got that Seattle minus six and a half. And a little tout to myself mm, tout, on the tout. on the pregame periscope. We ran through all the picks again, talking late line movement. And I advise people stay away from that plus nine or that minus nine Seattle, because I have a feeling that the six and a half will be good, but the nine will be bad. The Seahawks win by exactly seven points. Very good show. Well, when you, when you call your shot like that, you gotta, uh, you, you gotta tap yourself a little bit. We it's can- like how I told you to take the Giants money line or lay the points, and it <laughs> came squarely in the middle. You're welcome. You're welcome, Ryan. Of course, that lines were my lock. That didn't hit. However, I hit the Chargers <laughs> plus 175. It was a uh, it was a real delight. San Diego Super Chargers. Charge. Angriest and most fired up I've seen Decker all time, or oh, at, wow. at least in recent memory. Well, uh, he almost was, he was up smacking stuff. Almost goes, losing a, to goes, Trubisky will do that to you. Sean. Yeah, he, he goes, it's such a long season. Could we not get one break? And then, of course, the uh, <laughs> Bears miss a 42-yard field goal. Chargers money line hits. Uh, Justin's uh, day is saved. Kramer hit his lock. Seattle minus six and a half. And surprisingly, we both hit our three-team teases. Rare, rare week for that. I had Indy, Seattle, Houston. 
and you had Houston, Seattle, and uh, Tampa Bay plus eight and a half. Ballsy leg of the tees, uh, throwing uh, Jameis Winston in there, Ryan. Uh, well, you know that guy just just puts it up there. He does. He, he's kind of a turnover machine, but uh, he's also just so awesome for fantasy. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. Just doesn't matter. All right, let's get through the games. Minnesota nineteen, skins nine. I had the Vikings. I kept going back and forth. Do I do I play Kirk Cousins in prime time or do I fade him? You like that? You like that? No, I do not like that. Uh, you you had the uh, skins. Real ugly game. Legit chance for Minnesota to cover late, and then just multiple holding penalties, ground the clock out, and uh, not a good game by any means. Uh, yeah, and you you knew the answer to this question. Don't back Kirk Cousins in prime I time. I even I recorded a video for my bookie explaining how to bet football, and one of the three things I included <laughs> was fading Kirk Cousins in prime time. I don't even listen to myself. I thought the uh, I thought the Vikings or the, the skins curse would be more than uh, enough to throw it off. Adrian of. Peterson against his old team <clears throat> doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that, uh, you know, lets a grudge just go by the wayside. No, he was not. fired up. So yeah, you know, kudos to you Thursday night football giants, 26 lions, 31. I had the lions minus seven. You had the giants plus seven, <laughs> Mr. Jones. Sliding in that back door, mm. uh, saw it coming from a mile away. Two separate drives where I swore they were going to back door. Eventually, uh, one of those two they hit. Detroit just when they got up by two scores, I was upset because I wanted them to just kick the field goal. Yep. And uh, you know, go up twenty eight twenty or whatever, or twenty seven twenty, and then just or what it would have been twenty seven nineteen. And uh, no, they had to score that touchdown because of the Giants weak secondary and then eventually let the garbage touchdown. Nightmare scenario. Uh, Giants were never in this game. My favorite is when you explain that. That comes up twice, maybe three times a year where you're betting on a game and you don't want them to score those extra points because oh, you yeah. know the back door will just be wide open. Uh, yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? The Giants fucking suck. The season <laughs> the season's over. Oh, I thought it was on the brink, Ryan. Ah, it is back against the wall. This is, this is a back <laughs> against the wall game. Tennessee Titans 27, Tampa Bay Bucks 23. I had our Titans, our gals, you had the Bucks. Man, so many chances for this game to go uh, the Bucks way. And I was kind of rooting for the Bucks as well because you picked the Bucks in the super contest, correct? Or, or was that Pina? I Pina forget. had them. So I was kind of secretly rooting for the Bucks, even though I knew they would lose, and that's why I picked the Titans. <laughs> Tannehill, decent game. Jameis again throws for three hundred yards. They won the game. The refs blew it. <laughs> that that was a that was a fumble Ford, return for a touchdown. That was really horrible. Uh, how when it happens to the Saints, it's a nonstop discussion for the entire week. That's why you got to let this ball play out. It, why do we have these discussions when they, they blew it dead so quick on the blocked field goal scoop score that got called back because, um, because they recovered it, but they, they blew the whistle. Uh, Every other sport. It seems like such an easy thing to do not to blow the whistle. Americans. This is an American sport problem. We, they blow the whistle. Every other sport in the world, the play just keeps going on and you figure it out later. For those of you who've been watching the, the rugby world cup, they just go to the replay. You hear on the TV feed, you hear the ref talking to the replay. They're like, ah, this is what I saw. Nope, nope, nothing. And that's that. But they let the play go. And, uh, yeah, I was just bitter because I lost this game. But this this was a horrendous call. But more horrendous than the call, Sean, that fake was bad. <laughs> that that was, like, that guy had no business running the ball. So. No. It was, I mean. <laughs> That was pretty hilarious. It wasn't quite Sean Taylor in the Pro Bowl on the punter, but it was pretty it was, close. It was close. Just imagine you have Derrick Henry, a, a grown man, just a just a beast of a human being dying to carry. That's his reason he was put on Earth, and then instead you let a yeah. <laughs> this like skinny little European guy, uh, or I'm sure he's European. You know, he's a he's a special teamer. Ryan. The yes. Chargers we were just talking about seventeen mm. Bears sixteen. Uh, we were both on the Chargers. Wow, just two teams who do not want to win a game going head to head. Something had to give, and it was the Chicago Bears. Pinero missing a forty-two yarder. 
Matt Nagy catching a lot of heat for not not running one more play uh, to get the uh, field goal kicker closer. And then uh, there's even a little bit more, uh, more kind of like bad look for Matt Nagy. I guess Pinero, they asked him if that was the hash he wanted it on, and he said no. Oh, so they wow. couldn't even like run a QB sneak to the other side of the hash to get him set up right. Not good times in Chicago. And again, we've seen it with this Bears team where their defense is really good, but at some point when you lose complete confidence in your offense, it's kind of deflating. And uh, yeah, you could just you could just w- see it out on the field. Uh, I mean, what? Remember um, all these people coming after us for 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 saying that we're 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 coming on uh, coming on a Trubisky a little too hard. We're wrong about Trubisky. <laughs> He's a good player. Looks like you lost your defensive coordinator, and your team fucking sucks now. Well, and uh, period. You lost you lost Fangio, who turns out maybe not an amazing head coach, but an awesome coordinator. And we hit it so hard in the NFC North preview. I've talked about it a number of times, but like their turnover differential was so insane that they were due to regress. And now that they've regressed, it's really exposed the ineptitude of the offense and in particular, Mitch Trubisky. And I think they do miss Jordan Howard. They miss Jordan Howard. I think this Montgomery kid, I mean, he's looked good at times, They but they have weapons. This is just Mitch Trubisky. I was watching NFL live or one of those shows today and they were talking about how it's, you know, the, it's hard to play well as a, a quarterback when your coach doesn't believe in you and he's calling all these short <laughs> uh, it, chicken or the egg. It has nothing to do with whether they believe in you or this, not. This offense. Throw, <laughs> throw complete passes and people believe in you. That's how Super, life works. Uh, tropical storm. Patrick Tur- Mahomes isn't good because, oh, I believe in you. Yay. I'm I'm a Mahomes backer. It's like, no, you got you, you think when you're dropping back to pass, you're like, I wonder if Nagy's into me. No, you don't. You just complete the pass or you don't. It's really that simple. Ryan, it, it, are we upgrading Tropical Storm Trubisky to a hurricane? <laughs> yeah, his the <laughs> amount of blowing he does is tremendous. This reminds me of a recent iTunes review oh. we received <laughs> from Onions Water titled S- "Said by No One Ever." Why do you guys hate the Bears and love the Packers? <laughs> I just need to know why you guys love the Packers and just rip on the Bears. You guys once said all praise Aaron Rodgers, and yes, he's good. But how many Super Bowls has he won? Onions, one, one. If he was that good, he would win the division every year, and he doesn't. He's a little bitch that won't listen to his coach. <laughs> I'm not triggered. Five star podcast though. So shout out to the Chicago Bears fan. Hit us up. I'll get you guys. I'll get you a T-shirt, man. I I, I have no issue with the bears as a team. I'm just kind of calling it. Like I see it. Sean, the you, defense is amazing. Khalil Mack yeah. watching that guy play defense, man. That, you know, that gets me fired up. Like I, I turned Gus Johnson. Oh, no. I mean, I, I'm that is one aspect of this game coming up against the bears. That really scares me is guys like Khalil Mack playmakers that they have. It's not my fault. The bears can't figure out the quarterback position. And I think to our credit, we've gone out of our way to make fun of Aaron Rodgers in unique ways <laughs> that aren't discussed in mainstream media. So I, I feel like we make fun of Rodgers a ton. I mean, but the guy wins a bunch of football games. You're right. He's not up there with Joe Montana, Brady, multiple Super Bowl. Eli Manning. <laughs> and again, maybe that hurts. <laughs> if you're going to put Eli Manning above <laughs> Aaron Rodgers in the all time oh, quarterback rating, I no, think no, that no, we really, were just counting Super Bowls. I thought we were just counting. Oh, Super okay. Bowls. Well, I'm just pointing out that Super Bowl is probably not a great measure of all time quarterbacks. As you see with the, when you create a, a model and yeah. you see uh, results that in no way pass the eye test, it's time to go back and look at the model. What's the point of the game? You play to win the game, to right? win the championship. Uh, Listen, I, I tell me who else is calling Aaron Rodgers. You know, we're calling. Yeah, hey, we're calling it like whatever. We, see he, it. We're, we like money and the <laughs> Bears. If you go back and I challenge you, listen to all the the, the pre-show the, or the preseason stuff we've done. I guarantee I've taken more Bears overs on the season than I have. I locked this. the Bears up back to back, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But where. Mitch Trubisky fucking sucks. Yeah. I called it before he got drafted. I called it. I think the day. what it is is Ryan. You keep bringing up the <laughs> fact that they pass on Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson. This would be a good time to remind. I thought I the Earl Thomas uh, passing by the Eagles. I thought that haunted me. But 
again trading up shout out to the bears fan hit us up we'll get you a t-shirt seattle 27 atlanta 20 i've already hit on this one uh seattle covered that six and a half that sweet sweet six and a half where we picked it on the preview podcast ugly game matt Schaub somehow threw for 400 yards Seattle's I'm reading fraudulent. That right. Seattle is fraudulent. Highly, highly fraudulent. San Francisco is going to win this division just because they're fraudulent and the Rams are down and out. It's a weird. Uh, it are there going to be two wild card teams from the NFC West? Right? Definitely. Okay. I think one hundred percent. I think four hundred and sixty yards. Shab threw four. Yeah. That's insane. Weird game. Twenty four nothing. Felt really good. Talk about a typical gambling situation. It's oh like, yeah. Oh, here it go. Oh no. It's oh shit. And it's and it's, he, they missed field goals. They missed a couple field goals. They cut their kicker this week. He missed so many field goals. How do they come close to covering this? How, they covered some numbers. Crazy. Jags 29, Jets 6. Uh I was all over the Jags. You're the Jets there, Ryan. Great Minshew game. Uh Jets again, horrible. Darnold's banged up. Offensive line issues. Trouble in paradise. Adam Gase just he's he's quietly. I wouldn't even put him in Jeff Fisher territory. Like this guy's an all time. Like they were talking about his last twenty five games or or Jeff Fisher won games. Yeah, I like, mean we like to bust his chops because he was eight and eight or seven and nine. But I mean Adam Gase can only dream of being eight and eight or seven and nine. Like those days are long behind Adam Gase. He's not had a winning. He had one winning season, ten and six. First year, uh, since then six and ten, seven and nine, one and six. So what's I mean? Is he how? What's his overall record? Do you, do you have it? Yes, it's uh, twenty four and thirty one. Now, if you if you just That's look at his good. if you look at his last three years, uh, then you're looking at fourteen and uh, <laughs> twenty five. That is. I googled uh, worst head football coach records. Dick McPherson, eight mm -hmm. and twenty-four. He, but he's coached so many more games. Like, all right, here, D David Shula, nineteen and fifty-two. That's pretty comparable, right? Yeah, that he's in the David Shula. <laughs> I don't know if Adam <laughs> Gase has that name recognition. I mean, and it, it's 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 remarkable how bad he is and how toxic. Like, I think the number one thing you take away from this, if you're a future employer, is he can't. He has no idea what culture is. No, none of his teams have had culture. None of no. his teams have had any clue. I mean, wh what was his best record? It was his first year Ten and six. coaching a team, right? Yeah. He took over a team and then he poisoned the culture. <laughs> Just like Justin Fuente is attempting to do down in Blacksburg with the Hokies. Eagles 31, Bills 13. Both were on the birds. Nice win uh, for the Eagles. Put up 218 rushing yards slamming it down the bills throat throwing the bills through a table josh allen newsflash not good and the the bills defense overrated i would say hugh jackson 11 and 44 yeah <laughs> you're in hugh jackson territory adam Gase, without the heat which is weird because they're they're in the new he's in the new york market and you think you'd be catching more gruff but i think jets fans and beat writers are just so broken they don't even care yeah Oh, Pat, Pat Shermer is pretty, uh, pretty high up on that list. Bad records. Yeah. Eagles look good. I think that was, uh, I tried to lock it up. You wouldn't let me No. Tried to lock it up. You wouldn't let me didn't want your hands all over. It. Seemed obvious. G good game, Sean. Nice you, win. Quality. Josh, you win. beat Josh Allen. Will you want a biscuit? Yeah, I'll take a biscuit. Rams 24 Bengals 10. Uh, we both covered that minus 13 and a half. Be honest. Didn't see a ton of this game. Seemed pretty simple. Uh, you know, Rams moving the ball up and down the field a little bit. Bengals just horrific. Uh, not much else to report. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we didn't see a ton of this game uh, at, in the moment. We liked it as a back bounce back spot. Yeah, solid bounce back spot. Bengals are just horrible. Benching Dalton on his birthday, not oh. on my special day. How could you? And Dalton's like, mm, mm, I wish they could have done it like 48 hours earlier so they could have traded me. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, but why didn't they trade him? Why didn't they trade A.J. Uh, Green? Uh, like, what are, what are they doing? When have the Bengals been run by a competent? The, the, I, the I shocking part I about. I understand being cheap. Bengals, I'm sorry. I understand being cheap, but cheap and stupid. There's no excuse. 
the Bengals have been the bang. The fact that the Bengals have talent is the part that's surprising. Their their ownership is clearly clearly they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And and uh, you know at this point, w- what's next? What's next? I think Finley is pretty. Sad. I'm actually kind of intrigued by the Bengals. Sean teaser mm. alert. Look out! Coming off the bye. Arizona nine, uh, New Orleans thirty one. I-, I picked this thinking that Bridgewater would be the starter. He wasn't. Breeze came in and uh, looked great. Put up a bunch of points against this Arizona defense. Thirty one to nine. You're on the Saints. Not much to report. Just New Orleans moving. I mean, New Orleans defense has really been the big surprise for them. The offense has looked uh, good as you'd predict, but I think their defense has been the real shock. Defense looks really good. I mean, Kyler looked like a rookie, and uh, yeah, just another win, Sean. Another win on this this quite epic season I'm having against the spread. I the, the Saints are ridiculous. They're winning the Super Bowl, right? It does feel like uh that's Have you what... have you bought your Saints to win the Super Bowl future ticket yet? No, I've not. What is uh what does my bookie have that at? I uh, carry that. Well, I, what I was going to tout first and foremost is that I picked it I picked one up a, a little while back and I picked it up 12 to 1. Ooh. Saints down to five fifty plus yeah. five fifty. Feels good to have a twelve to one in my pocket. It does. It won't feel good when they lose to the uh, Patriots in the Super Bowl. Broncos thirteen, Colts fifteen. You had the Broncos. I had the Colts. Just can't quit the Colts. You know who should quit the Colts? Fucking Adam Vinatieri. <laughs> Two field goals he missed and a extra point. That was really the difference in the spread. Yep. Um. Again, this Colts team just wins games. Uh, that's why it makes sense that we both had them in the tees. Or no, you didn't have them in the tees, but I did. Uh, great teasable team. And again, I still think this team is kind of priced as if Jacoby Brissett is a backup quarterback. And we see that, and he's just not. Their defense has a lot of their playmakers back. Should have seen this as an uglier game. But, I mean, yeah, hit a couple of those field goals and we cover this no problem. Some of these kickers this year. I mean, I, Matt I feel Bryant's like just been released the last couple of years. It's like it's been bad and then it's gotten worse. And then this year it's like it's even worse. I understand the extra points when they moved it back. But I think what happened was in the same way. And this is a brilliant point by myself. And I oh. really, I really compliment <laughs> myself, Ryan. But in the same way where like a shooter, he gets to the free throw line. He gets in rhythm. He sees the ball yep. go in the hoop. Now that they move the extra point back. I, I think that kick becomes tougher. They miss a couple extra points, and then all of a sudden they become unraveled because they think, oh. I can't hit an extra point. I have no confidence. I, cause kicking is clearly a mental thing, and I, I think there's something to that. That's just a great point. It is a great point. Need that layup line. There you go. Get hot. Carolina 13, San Francisco 51. I, I guess we just... We just have to start believing in Jimmy G and the 49ers. So weird. I still don't think he's good. And we forgot to mention, Sean, the most important thing, Joe Flacco out with a stiff yes. neck. Stiff neck and a, a stiff coach that he criticized. And then <laughs> but all of a sudden his vertebrae uh, was uh, fractured or whatever when <laughs> after he complained that they didn't go for it on third and four. Uh yeah, Carolina did I really didn't see that coming. Really liked Carolina this yeah, week. Yeah, got really, cute. Just really, have to realize no, San Francisco's not, really good. No, I I I no, I wasn't getting cute. I thought this would be a decent game. Didn't see that coming at all. I have to respect him. Houston twenty seven, Raiders twenty four. We both had Houston. Uh, they won. Deshaun Watson, great game there at the end, especially making some plays. Uh. Didn't ever feel like that minus seven was going to be in that great a shape. And Houston, it, nice win for them, but they still feel like they're underperforming. Like they have so much talent. JJ Watt is, of course, out for the season, so that's a horrible break for them. But it still feels like they're underperforming a little bit, right? Even though they're, yep. what, five and two now? I will not lay seven points with Bill O'Brien. I will not lay seven points with Bill O'Brien. And I was surprised because it's weird. The Raiders pass rush normally isn't that good, but they seem to get some pressure against this Houston team out. Uh, Laramie Tunsil just keeps getting false starts, leading the league in false starts. Oh, and, and Texans are five and three. Um, kind of an interesting team. And, and the, the AFC South, the bottom of the barrel right now is the Titans at four and four. 
every team in the AFC South is above 500. So they're all, they're all like, no one's great, but they're all pretty solid. Interesting division. Yeah. I just, I can't. It just, I, the Raiders might, I'm going to say something controversial, Sean. Go for it. The Raiders might not be horrible. Yeah. They're frisky. They're, they they're might, good as a dog. I, I think they're starting to be half competent occasionally on defense and it's still Derek Carr though. It's still Derek Carr. I just, you know, a, as I played this, this is the spot. This is the classic, like just Bill O'Brien's a fucking idiot game. And, uh, yeah, Raiders played we gotta hard. We got to get our shit going mentally. Raiders played hard. Kudos to them. New England, 27. Cleveland Browns, 13. Pats, another cover at the 13 and a half mark. <laughs> Three back-to-back -back turnovers against the Browns. You knew they were cooked then. The back door interestingly seemed like a possibility, but then uh, Freddie Kitchens did the smart thing, kicked the field goal late when they were down 27 10. Don't want to get that momentum touchdown. <laughs> want to knock it down to two store, two scores. And I'll say this because no one has talked about it and it's completely swept under the rug. But the Cleveland kicker had one of the great all time onside kicks. It was not recovered, but uh, I don't know. It, it was yeah, as far as style. I, uh, I thought it was going to get there. I would definitely, if I was a special teams coach, I would look to that style of kick. He did a drop kick and he's a punter and uh, he just kind of basically bounced it off the ground. And just like when it was a half inch off, kicked it very low, hard to handle. And uh, that's the kind of onside kick you want. Baker Mayfield kind of collapsing, yelling at reporters, going on tweet storms, emotional. Dude, I'm most proud about this prediction. We yes. were so on point. <laughs> Freddie Kitchens. I had Beckham as my seventh best receiver. We openly were shitting on the fact that they were getting a win total of nine. I I offered the entire world yeah, a Super did. Bowl future. Freddie Kitchen, is, he's lost control. Odell Beckham is giving another man a pair of shoes. That was so hilarious. The... Uh... Sean, if I ever try to give you a pair of shoes, just the goat hair shoes, and you could just see uh, Sharon, Shannon, uh, Shannon Sharp mm. shared. Uh, that's like a tongue twister. Shannon Sharp shared. No, uh, what? He, yo, yo, what's up? He shared a uh, the photo of like Baker's like face when he's looking at Odell. And, Odell was dying to give that gift to him, and <laughs> I mentioned in the preview podcast he's already. I got my gift. I got my housewarming. I can't, fuck? I can't wait to see Tom's the look on Tom's face when he unwraps those goat hair cleats. Tom's on to Baltimore. That's yep. what you should be caring about. The next game, you fucking loser, Beckham. Mm. Packers 31, Chiefs 24. I had the Chiefs, you had the Packs. Uh interesting game. I I I was raw I was right about Matt Moore and, and Andy Reid being able to scheme up some plays for them and yep. them being able to move the ball. I thought the defense could give them a decent effort, but just, man, that KC defense is just so bad. And kudos, I mean, I don't mean to trigger anyone. No, the guy said he wasn't triggered. But Aaron Rodgers had some awesome throws, right? And and that really kind of was the difference. Like that touchdown pass to, uh, I think it was Aaron Jones, or Jamal Williams in the back of the end zone. Like that was just an insane throw. Yeah, he's such a bad man. His family doesn't even talk to him. He's a bad boy. Plays by his own <laughs> rules. Completely ostracized by his family, but but takes in uh, random guys he meets at the gym. Uh, <laughs> for a, uh, I'm just talking about his roommate situation again. If I was an NFL player, I would not have a roommate. But hey, that's just me. I'm old fashioned. Pittsburgh 27, Miami 14. Wow, we were both on the Steelers just because. Miami was in the crawl space, Ryan, but are we taking three them out? covers in a row? Miami has crawled its way out of the crawl maybe space. Maybe timeout. Maybe not even in timeout. No, nah, dude, they're they're home free. Once they got that sweet, sweet Fitz magic, it really is the key. Josh Rosen. Dude, yeah, dude Josh Rosen sucks. was in on the tank job. He was, uh, yeah, selling the subprime mortgages, whatever they needed to get done to destroy this football team, but Brian Fitzmagic guy has no quit in him. No, no quit. Uh, no, I, whatsoever. I love him. Love him. Fucking. Did you know, Sean, he went to Harvard? Yeah, <laughs> he, he does have a lot of, uh, you know, 
probably explains the SATs to uh, people on his team. He's probably over under number of players who took the SATs on that Dolphins team. Mm. So I mean, you've got to take it, right? No. I mean, you have to have a test in your name, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Why don't we do that? Over under people who took actually took the SAT on uh, that Miami Dolphins team. You have Fitzmagic. And again, this isn't shitting on the Dolphins for being incredibly stupid. It's just the reality of NFL players. I'd say 50%. <laughs> right? Oh, man. No way. No, that's no too high. way. <laughs> Not a chance, Ryan. All right. Well, let's see. What else? We, oh, before we uh, before we get to the Manscaped read and, and moving on to the week nine picks, mm. Ryan. Okay. We missed some of the Green Bay uh, Kansas City game because we oh <laughs> did a little double date. Went out to the uh, lovely Pacific Dining Car in Los Angeles. Awesome spot. Great for a steak. Open 24 seven, which is a rarity wow. in Los Angeles. Wow. Almost like you're plugging it. I wish. I mean. <laughs> I wish I was getting something out of that uh, Pacific dining. It's kind of a plug. novelty, right? Like it's a, it's a novelty with with good actual. Food. It's a it's a unique L.A. spot. If you're coming to L.A. from out of town, I would definitely check out Pacific Dining Car. So had some nice steaks there, or I did. Uh, Ryan had the risotto, but uh, <laughs> plant based diet, Sean. Okay, okay, Joe Rogan. We <laughs> and then uh, the plan was we went to this. Um, this uh haunted house for adults and it was like half because you know sean and i love love yes. halloween we were Favorite. we were all we were all jacked up off halloween we're like Lo we love go we love doing activities and hanging out uh no your uh your lady friend uh suggested it seemed like a fun night out she she's really into halloween so it's, yes. it's a bit it's it's a little you know it's a lot to deal with this time of year we have not uh in the green household, we have not uh, done anything for Halloween. Oh. I'm going to get a last second bag of candy in case we get trick or treaters. Nice. Our, our neighbors next to us had a pumpkin sitting out for the entire year. They eventually, <laughs> they eventually re added more pumpkins, but it was hilarious just Same watching pump. it. <laughs> I, Cause I, I, I just completely tuned it out. But every day I walk by that house, like walk my dogs and in like August, I realized they had a pumpkin and I, Said so to my wife, I'm like, are, are they getting early on for Halloween? Yeah. And she's like, no, it's been there the entire year. Yeah. Apparently, you can just let pumpkins. That's the lack of weather. That's yeah, L.A., summers. man. It's all it's all kind of vague. So we get to the uh, we get to the haunted house, which is just in a neighborhood. Yeah. Like, man, I would have been pissed off if I lived around that thing. Oh, yeah. A lot of foot traffic. A lot of unnecessary it's, it's, foot traffic. To describe it, it's this giant mansion with like half haunted stuff. Uh, like little different side rooms where you go for different shows or you got to do like a little haunted scavenger hunt. And then you get like a punch card and you get all these different cocktails, a lot of ins, a lot of outs, a lot of ins. But when we're checking outs. in, there's this warning sign, right? And this warning sign, Sean, it, it talks about strobe lights and yes. having seizures and normal shit, right? Like don't <laughs> no per Perfect time for the music, Ryan. Ima oh, walk, oh, take wow. us through. The experience of the uh, haunted house. I, I'm so I'm reading this. Uh, I'm reading this sign, and I see some. Uh, I get down to the bottom, and it says, uh, "It says nudity." <laughs> and I'm at this point, I'm convinced you, they would never just warn us about some boobs. Yeah, we had that conversation. We were going back and forth. We go, no one's no one's spooked by boobs. No. It has to be something else. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it was 100%. I was convinced we were going to see a dick. Yes. Even before we got there, I was convinced we were going to show up in a room and there's going to be like people wearing masks and just dongs. So, and I don't know why. <laughs> and again, maybe your dong dar is uh, much stronger than mine because Shut when up. I said, when I said haunted house, the, a guy's dick was like the last thing that ever occurred to me. Well, it's Hollywood. And I, yeah. of course, Sean, I lived in West Hollywood mm. for a number of years. So I knew this was always on the table. Yeah. So yeah, then we, we go around, we do this scavenger hunt where we're, it, it's, I don't know. Well, how would you describe it? Like going to a museum if everyone was kind of getting scared together, but it, 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 it kind of felt like a, um, a, a frat party. <laughs> yeah. Okay. For, but College, they like yeah. made their own spooky stuff and they, you know, did a little bit of production, bunch of jungle juice, bunch of, bunch of jungle juice. 
And so we, we get through the first step. We solve the puzzle. Yep. We achieve success. Uh, we go down. We, we go get some more drinks. And uh, I think we go outside. We're like, okay, let's do the next step. Or we yep. get in line. Well, let's get a drink and get in line for the next step. And it's this. Uh, it's labeled ritual. The ritual. The yes. ritual. Yes. Oh, great. This is going to be <laughs> awesome. We're going to go into some dark room. <laughs> There's going to be some like. Because mind you, we're in Los Angeles, so these are like actors. Yeah. These are actors. This is their big break. This is a thing. Well, and there was uh, not to get too uh, off the beaten path there, but uh, pun intended. There was this old guy outside that had no shirt on, and it was actually kind of cold for uh, certainly for LA. And he's just <laughs> shirt off like crazy, <laughs> like uh, picture like uh, Bernie Sanders meets Gollum. He's the sidekick for the, the evil villain. Yeah. Like and he's just scientist. there and he's just like having weird conversations with people online. And I just kept joking that he wasn't with the production because he I mean, there was a lot of homeless people in the area. So the idea that a homeless guy could wander in and just start talking to people. I mean, it's not out of the question. After we talked to him and he pretended to have an imaginary friend. Yeah. Uh, it was still unclear if he was part of the production. So to your point, very, very unique experience there. So we're in line for the ritual. Yeah, we're in line for the ritual. And I, I think what, what they, they group us up. They walk us down some stairs and uh, holy shit, dude's got a cape on. <laughs> dude's got some sort of cape robe on and he's, he's putting ashes on the ground. And then it's time for the fucking strobe light. <laughs> and oh, of course, you know what? You know, the strobe light turns on in my household. The first thing I think about is like, let's get Long let's cocks. Let's take out the dick. So, of course, at this point. Well, and, and leading up to it, Ryan just kept going. This is where we're going to see the dick. This is where we're going to see the dick. And then I, and I go like, <laughs> I almost wanted to just say to you, I'm like, dude, why do you keep we're not going to see a dick? Like, it's kind of weird. But then I'm remembering the nudity warning. And then we're in this just random basement mansion. And uh, the strobe lights flickering on and off, and the guy just rips his clothes off, and he's like completely painted. And uh, yeah, we just just uh, my wife burst out laughing. I started <laughs> laughing. No one else is laughing because they weren't predicting a dick. And Ryan just lead pipe lock, uh, calling this guy's dick a mile away. Felt a lot like the Rams plus three sixty. Yeah. I, or the, the Bucks plus 360 in uh, Los Angeles. But yeah, so, I mean, to complete this story, you know, the ritual happens. There, There is a naked woman demon or whatever. But at the end of the day, again, naked woman, cool. She could have been wearing some clothes. All right, great. Do I Am I going to say no to seeing some titties? Of course not. But if that means I'm also going to have to see a guy dance around, like, it wasn't like he was sideways or trying to hide it. No. He was looking us in the eyes. And not me but doing his you. acting <laughs> and there's it's just it's just what it, it didn't it didn't enhance the situation it just made it about the dick <laughs> the dick stole the show well i i don't know if i would have been so focused on it had you not been predicting it the entire night well why else would they warn you of nudity sean why why else, else? perfect transition ryan to our uh live read that's right Manscaped. We were hanging out in a uh, haunted house, and you know what? <laughs> Couldn't help but notice the guy involved in the ritual completely clean down there, completely manscaped, if you will. <laughs> Hopefully, he went to manscaped.com, used that promo code SGP, got 20% off and free shipping, but he. I mean, it was pretty clear that guy had uh, more than 20% off. He he had it all off. He had 100% off. Manscaped, uh, they don't got that going for our listeners, but 20% off. It's a good entry point. And again, there's a lot of uh, accoutrements associated with the manscaping products. They have like a uh, ball sack toner. I shit you not. It's it, and it all comes in a nice kit. Ryan there is uh, he's holding the kit now. If you're watching on YouTube.com. Uh, slash sports gambling podcast. Nice little travel sack. It's pretty nice. Again, pun intended there. Yeah, it is. It's classy. Um, and again, a nice little, uh, nice little travel bag. Very easy. You can, uh, I think even the USB charger. Oh, very nice. USB charger. Exactly. Got this guard here. Make guard. sure. Guard. Yeah. If you don't want to go 
like the guy in the haunted house. Yeah. You don't want to completely go clean uh, oh. surface. You want to. If you don't want to have a ritual. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you do like a fade, like number two on the side, <laughs> number three on top, blend it in, whatever you want to do. <sighs> Manscaped has you covered, and Ryan even gonna demonstrate the lawnmower no, 2.0. It's, it's so easy. <laughs> So easy, it's even so uh, quiet, Sean. Fire it up, Ryan. Oh, mm -hmm. well, let's actually hear it. You can't hear it. It's so quiet. It's whisper quiet. Ryan is uh, taking care that, of you know what that means. The uh, no one will hear you doing. It. Yeah, that's the other thing. You you got a loved one, whatever your situation is, you want to you want to tighten it up, get a quick uh, get, get rid of that five o'clock shadow. You don't want to hear. Uh, <laughs> So I'm just laughing at Got Ryan. Got some like Capper Bear pubes on my uh, yeah. Ryan blowing here. out the hair from the uh, <laughs> lawnmower 2.0. But again, you don't want to make a lot of noise, a lot of ruckus, draw attention to the fact. But again, Manscaped.com promo code SGP 20% off and free shipping. All right, a lot of ground we covered in the middle there, Ryan. Let's get to it with some uh, week nine picks. Wow, Sean. That was uh, that was an exciting game uh, week of games. This one is going to top that uh, bye weeks to start Atlanta. They can't lose this week. It sucks. We can't lock them up. We can't fade them. Cincy also on a bye. Rams and the Saints. So bit of a you know we got the, we're down to fourteen games again Thursday night this week. We got the San Francisco 49ers heading to Arizona, where that this is a giant number. Ten and a half for mm. the Niners, minus five thirty on the money line. Arizona plus three seventy five. Forty three is the total. Whew. Said a lot of words there, Sean. Uh, added a column to the old sheet with the look ahead. I, I was shocked to see this look ahead move from six ahead, six and a half to ten and a half. That's a lot of movement, right? That is a lot it, of movement. Is this the reckoning now? It, it, we believe. We believe this is a good team. Do we believe it's a good team? Yeah. Do I we do. believe in Jimmy G yet? Uh, I don't. I don't. Again, I'm gonna wait to fade the 49ers until the playoffs. But I think right now you got to be crazy to pick uh, the Cardinals, even with ten and a half. San Francisco is a very physical team, a dominating defense. This is a horrible matchup for the Cardinals. This is this is very similar to the. Uh, I mean, you just saw what the Saints did to them, right? And uh, I mean, look at the look at the <laughs> defensive line of the 49ers. They're going to destroy them. It I, I does feel like that could be what what happens. You know, the square sharp angle is like, wow, there's all these free points. We just saw San Francisco on a blowout win. Is it uh, square sharp to take the Cardinals? I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't picture actual sharps being that naive to back this Cardinals team even at home. Kyler Murray's going to get destroyed by Bosa. I mean, that's just what's going to happen. Uh, Cardinals have shockingly won nine of the last 10 meetings. Kind of a weird stat there. That is weird. And the Cardinals have done well as, uh, you know, home dogs, 36 and 21 ATS um, since doesn't 2007. Weird, but doesn't weird shit happen on the short week? I mean, San Francisco, I, both teams are banged up. Uh, I mean, there's am no I over way. Th am I over? You're, so you're telling me if I'm. If I'm looking at a side that's getting less than 15% of the action, I'm, I'm being square sharp. No, I mean, I, I guess in my head, I would think more people would talk themselves into the, uh, into the Cardinals it, people in like the gambling Twitter will say like, well, there's, there's four free points. I'll give you 10, I'll give you 14 free points with this Cardinals team. They're just not getting it done against the San Francisco. There's so much, uh, the San Francisco team is very just very disciplined um their confidence is sky high they're able to run the ball none of that stuff it matches up well with the cardinals or for the cardinals and yet it's a thursday night game where we're, we're getting 10 and a half points at home they've had they've played what one two good games at home when they beat the falcons and tied the lions uh I'm kind of with you. Maybe you just maybe you just get out of the way. Don't yeah. overthink it. I already I got uh, San Francisco in the my bookie super contest at minus ten, so I already locked that in. I I, I just uh, I'm gonna take the Cardinals. Nice. I, I can't. 
I have to. T- it's just too many points. I I'm sticking to my too many points for Jimmy G. Even though this defense has been very very good. I don't, I I think there's a, there's a decent chance they get shut out. Wouldn't be surprised. Mm-hmm. I, I I think they're whatever their team total is. I would I wouldn't be scared to take them under ten points. Yeah, I just I'm gonna I'm gonna fade a four point adjustment because of one game one blowout. Sean, not only do we get a great Thursday night game this week, but we get another treat here on the West Coast where we get to set our alarms and watch football at 630 in the morning before the sun comes up. Houston minus two in Wembley Stadium against the home Jacksonville Jaguars. 105 on the money line for the Jags. Houston minus 125. 46 and a half is the total. Why? Why are the Jags not getting home field respect here? I'm the half London, joking. The I'm London joking. Jags. I'm half joking here, but I'm not really. Bill O'Brien on a road trip. Really? Yeah. I mean, this is old hat for the Jags, right? I. I those those two factors right there. Give me the Jags. Bill O'Brien's not going to have this team. Has Bill O'Brien ever been to London? I don't know. I I don't have his uh, passport book in front of me. But uh, I, I don't know if he has. I'm going to ask Google. <laughs> this this kind of seems to play into the Jags' hand. And if you remember that Jags-Texans game, the Jags were able to pressure Deshaun Watson. I think what they only had 13 points that first matchup. J.J. Watt out for the season. Texans have, have – they've kind of dominated the, the historically the matchup. But it's a good Jags revenge game. Um and and I think the sloppy field conditions that could be, that's kind of this seems like a game where Fournette kind of has goes off right. JJ Watts out. You, I mean, I will. I'll again. I think Oakland might be a decent team, and I think they might have a decent offense. I think they're in the top ten DVOA on offense. But it did seem like this Houston defense had some flaws, and I think Minshew. You know, say what you will, but. Foles is Foles can get activated after this game. I, that's got to be in Minshew's head. Maybe he overthinks it. Maybe that's a negative. I'll take it as a positive. This guy strikes me as the kind of guy when when the pressure mounts, he gets better. Yeah, and I think Fournette has the opportunity. But also, Sean, would it blow your mind if I told you DJ Shark is leading the NFL in touchdown catches? Really? This is like with six what the fuck this is a legit team with some play i mean it's not dd westbrook who everyone thought it was going to be it's it's dj chark and 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 they have a number of receivers Connolly, another one who has been flashing scoring touchdowns i I love yeah they got a lot of options I, i was half kidding but why is jacksonville not getting respect as being the home team here they've actually done it before yeah, and and they're experienced playing overseas, or you know, in this Wembley stadium. Some- I mean, it does seem like they actually of all these teams, they seem to have a bit of a fan base over there. Well, I think when you play over and over, but also just knowing how to do the trip. If I had to guess, Bill O'Brien not doing the travel right, probably getting over there right. Yeah, last they're night. going Thursday, which oh. again is a is a bad move. They they go, we're, we're, our guys like routines. We'll. S- Send them over early to get used to living in London. Routines are fine. That's a long flight. Houston's in the middle of the country. Yeah. Like they're adding out. It makes no sense. Washington coming off the long rest of Thursday night football. They head to Buffalo where the Bills are a nine and a half point favorite. Minus 440 on the money line. Redskins plus 350. 36 and a half. Very low total. Minus 10 was the look ahead. So a slight adjustment here. Sean, I like how you just slotted in the pick for me. Yeah. But you know where I'm going here. We, Josh Allen cannot be laying these points right now. No, he can't. I'm not. I, I don't even know if I care because Callahan, one way or another, if Haskins is in there, guess what? They're running the ball. Yeah. I, the I'm, ball. A, I'm a little scared if Haskins is in there because the turnover potential. But if Keenum's there and it sounds like he's going to be, lock it up and uh, at Unk. We asked for some listeners' que- listener questions. Ooh, okay. At Unk wrote in Bills in Survivor against the Skins. No, no, bad spot. Uh, did you just watch? I mean, that Bills team severely flawed. Their rushing defense has been exposed. 
you know, recap the Eagles game, 218 yards. Uh, that's a lot. And this Washington Redskins team, they're coached by an offensive lineman or an O-line coach. They're going to want to pound the rock. You stole uh, one of my points, Sean. 28th uh, rush DVOA defense. 28th. Now, granted, they have a good pass defense, but that's not good. And this is going to be a team that's going to want to run the clock, yeah. slow the game down. And, and Josh Allen, guess what? Guess what, guys? Hey, metric. Undefeated. <laughs> and still. And he's super turnover prone. Yeah, wow. That, not much to say in this game, honestly. Again, still blown away that Washington's defense is the cheapest in DFS this week. Yeah, we hit on it on the DFS podcast. Like, what? This Bills team turns the sense. ball over. It doesn't make sense at all. Uh, yeah, I just I, I think the Eagles showed it, and the Eagles are I, they're below average running the ball this year. Like they're not a good running team, and they exploited them. So I like it, and I like Washington coming off the long rest. Sean, teams coming off Thursday night are now nine and five straight up, nine and five against the spread. So solid trend. Pretty pretty strong there. Next up, Tennessee heads to Carolina, where Carolina was four and a half on the look ahead. It's now three and a half minus one ninety on the money line. Tennessee plus one sixty five. Forty one and a half is the total. Well, I'll tell you one thing the Titans aren't doing. The Titans aren't winning three games in a row, Sean. <laughs> Give me the Panthers coming off that thumping. Yeah. They get is, focused. This is a serious bounce back spot for the Titans. Will or the uh, Panthers. Is Cam Newton uh finished with his transition? Will he be playing? He's uh no, he's still in his role as backup quarterback. Mm. Kyle Allen kind of struggled, which means bring in Will Greer, baby. Come on, Willie G. Adoree Jackson, he's out for the uh Titans. I think that could be uh could be a bit of an issue. Tennessee dealing with some offensive line injuries. Carolina, though, on the other side of the ball, they're getting Greg Little back. Mm. I think it's just they figure out how to get McCaffrey going again. I think they had a formula that was kind of working uh, for them as far as moving the ball, taking care of business. Non-conference road game for the Titans coming off a win. Just a bad situation. Tan road Tannehill <laughs> against a decent team. A lot of scenarios that uh, you'd like to take the Panthers here. So I'll, I'll ride the Panthers as well. The spread should be, uh, yeah. I think we, everyone has got some shit on their eyes because of that horrible game that Carolina played last week. And I'm for the same reason I like the close your eyes special, even though they they're not underdogs here. I like them in this spot. Uh, lay the three and a half points here, Sean. N not surprisingly, um, more money on Carolina though. Yeah, T but Tennessee can't win another game, right? No, three in a row seems crazy for them. Ugh. Chicago heads to Philadelphia where your Eagles, Sean, three and a half on the look ahead. It's now mm. five minus one. Wow. Minus two thirty five. Chicago plus two hundred. Forty two is the total. Where are you going, Sean? In the game? Where do you think, Ryan? I'm going to the Philadelphia Eagles. I, I think a big reason uh that they're gonna win this game and cover. They're getting a lot of guys back from injury, right? Deshaun Jackson, Avante Maddox, Timmy Jurdigan, all practice. Sounds like they're all going to go. Um, the Eagles defensive line kind of coming alive. You saw that with Fletcher Cox's first strip sack uh, of the season against uh, Josh Allen. And, yeah, I, I think this team kind of got a little bit of their mojo back, and I, I think it's a good spot. The Bears, that has to be – I don't know if beating the Chargers is necessarily a dream – but that's got to be a pretty deflating loss at home. Now you go on the road, you have to announce that, uh, you know, Mitch is starting again at quarterback um, and Chicago quietly their their ability to stop the run post Akeem Hicks. And this was a uh, courtesy of our good pals over at Walter football mm. post Akeem Hicks that bears run defense, not quite the same. You saw what Latavius Murray did. I think Jordan Howard in a revenge game. Nice uh, bounce back opportunity. Good opportunity in a DFS as well. And Deshaun Jackson, he's scheduled to be out there. I, I think that just opens up the offense so much. Um, on the other side of the ball, maybe, you know, Robinson gets a double move on uh, one of the cornerbacks, the Eagles. But I, I, I <laughs> no, I'm saying that's certainly a possibility. I, I, I mean, I, don't I just minimize it. I just don't see 
you know, Mitch coming in and just balling out the guy. I mean, if you, I, I was watching the press conference with Mitch Trubisky and he was, he said his coach told him to go watch the game film, gave him some advice. And he goes, I was watching the game film and I didn't think that was me out there. What? The, it didn't seem like me out there on what? the field. So Mitch Trubisky's having an outer body of experience. Now, this is the Halloween episode, but Sam Darnold seeing ghosts. <laughs> Mitch Trubisky's, Mitch Trubisky's having Trubisky's an out of body out of, experience. Yeah, you got to fade him here. Is it a little inflated off that three? Uh, probably, but is five a key number? No. Should it be three and a half? Probably, but I'll, I'll take Eagles minus five. You, you know why I'll take Eagles my, minus five? Because Mitch Trubisky fucking sucks, and the Eagles appear to be stopping the run. Yeah. Um, I would argue that the Bills are a very similar team to the Bears, and – they clog up the run and force the quarterback to beat you. I don't, I'm just never in my life going to bet on Mitchell Trubisky to beat me. Would I rather be laying three and a half than five to your point? Yeah. But at one, not enough to scare me off this one. Give me the Eagles. Sean, this has lock potential. Wow. I might not let you stop me this time. Okay. The only thing that concerns me here is that the Eagles also unclear if they're a good offense. And they could really they're, struggle. They're ninth in points per game, but I, I know what you mean. They they have moments where they've really looked out of sorts. Uh, I'd say the two quarterbacks who clear who just look have moments where they look really bad are Tom Brady and Carson Wentz this year. Carson Wentz has moments where he looks great, but then he has throws. It, I know you don't like it when I say this, Sean, but it reminds me a lot of watching Donovan Donovan McNabb. Granted, more of his throws were bad when it's just you're insane. It's just way. Dude, you're Purely, insane. Hold he's on, had, hold he's on, had one hold bad on. game. I'm not saying he's having bad games. I'm saying there are moments in games where he just makes horrendous throws. And it's no. not it's not something I saw last year. So No, you're you're way off. Okay. I, on a lot of levels. Because he was probably less accurate last year. So if you're saying you didn't see that last year, I've you're seen, seen it more this year. Atrocious gameplay from Carson Wentz this year. That's what scares me. I'm That's, still laying the fucking point, Sean. There's no uh statistics you. that could Well, I'm just saying if you're if you're going to make up stuff, that's fine, Sean, but there's I'm nothing watching the games. You're getting so defensive, which tells me I must be right. No, I I think I think there's a lot of fair critiques of Carson Wentz, but that to say that he's atrocious at times, I think is not He's that's had, not fair criticism. What I'm saying is that he's supposed to be here. And, and you can't see this if you're just listening, but I'm saying he's supposed to be here. He's he's having a lot of moments where he's down real low. That's all I'm saying. I That's what's completely disagree. All I was saying a is a lot of moments where he's atrocious. That means he's horrible. No, I'm saying he's having moments where you're just like, what the fuck was that? And that's what's scaring me off. Or that's what would scare me off betting the five. But like I said, I, did you not hear me when I said this has lock potential? I did. I was I'm listening. just purely saying that for a team, the Bears, who have a decent defense, I'm not sure. I'm more in a weird way. I'm more. I'm. I'm more certain on what I'm going to get from the defense. I think that the defense is going to stop the run. I think they're going to give up some plays in the passing game, which makes me nervous when I'm not sure if the Eagles' offense is going to be able to consistently move the ball. Moving on, Vikings coming off Thursday night football. They head to Kansas City. Sean, I don't see this uh, up over there at the my bookie. Mahomes, I guess, could play. Maybe he doesn't play. Yeah, he's not playing. I mean, do you know that? Yeah. Confirm. Breaking news. Patrick Mahomes will not play, according to my sources. That they're uh, j they're just kind of bluffing the the Vikings into preparing for that. Interesting game because I I I, I think I'm going Vikings here. I, I like the Vikings giving that extra rest. I think whatever juice the the Chiefs got from that uh, first Matt Moore game, not going to be here for second Matt Moore game. Um, but Should really, they, I just I don't see the Chiefs defense being able to stop Minnesota in any sort of way. Dalvin Cook yeah. is going to run all over this team. I think Diggs uh, could have a couple deep shots. How is Kansas City's defense going to stop Minnesota, regardless of what goes on the other side of the ball? Uh, what time is this game being played? 10 a.m. West. Perfect. Coast. Perfect time to back Kirk Cousins especially against the defense that that's this bad. I'm not sure why, why, why is Kansas city favored? Yeah. I mean, it, especially if more is 
starting. I, I think it would. It's gonna be. It's gonna close like Minnesota minus one, Minnesota minus two. It, this line assumes more starting. This would be bigger if Mahomes is starting. I would think so. Yeah, I don't because know because Green Bay was laying four, and Green Bay and Minnesota aren't that far off on a neutral site. Yeah, it's confusing. It was prime time though. Anyway, I, I'm kind of with you. I think this might be one of those instances of taking the two and a half. Granted, this is the we're using the Westgate line that they had to drop Wednesday night for their super contest. Uh, unclear what this will surface at in the wild. Um, three and a half. So, Sean, this might this tells me they think Mahomes is playing the Westgate at least because the look ahead was Minnesota minus three and a half. And if that's the line with Matt Moore. So if you think if Mahomes is playing, are you taking Minnesota plus two and a half? Oh man, that's tough. Yeah, I, I think I'm just locked into Minnesota, whatever side it is, because I just don't think Kansas City's defense can slow him down. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, so does Kansas City need to rush him back for this game? And maybe they do. Maybe they do end up playing him. I, I don't think they're gonna ultimately play. Him. Do they need to rush him back though? I don't think they do. The, the AFC is so, like what is it? Four, five teams above 500. It's not. I don't feel like there's a lot of competition. The they have a you know they have a game and a half lead on the three and four Raiders. So, I yeah I I uh, I like Minnesota here, but I do think Minnesota will be favored if Matt Moore is going to be the starter. Yeah, I do too. So that that's why I don't really understand this line. They think Mahomes is playing. It must be Jets head to Miami coming off Monday night. Or they they uh, that could just be the line they put out for the contest, kind of splitting the difference. Maybe I I do see uh. I do see that there is a, a two and a half potentially in the wild. I don't think it must not be a number. It's the only place out there. Um, Jets head to Miami coming off Monday night football where the Dolphins, they covered Sean Fitz he magic. He knows how to do it. Plus Plus one forty on the money line. Jets minus three and a half minus half, minus one sixty on the money line. 41 is the total. Sean, this is another game. I, I feel like in the NFL, it's rare to see these kind of adjustments on look ahead lines this late in the season. But this this was Jets six and a half, which <laughs> that seems crazy. That's insane. It's now three and a half. Let me ask you this, Sean. Why are the Jets favored? Yeah, what have uh, you seen about? I mean, granted, they beat the uh, the Cowboys, which was fun. But uh, Miami got people off the scent, maybe Miami kind of shown some rare flashes of competency. Um, the Jets offensive line is super banged up. Locker room is probably not super happy. L locker room in turmoil. Jamal Adams compared himself to Tom Brady <laughs> <laughs> saying that he should he, like, you can't even discuss trading him. Fitz magic, man. He's alive and well, the guy is just whoever. It doesn't matter. Throw him out there. I think Mark Walton look for Mark yeah. Walton. Interesting uh, DFS play for the old uh, Walton boy. And uh, yeah, I'm right with the, the fins fins up, man. Have we I'm not going to take the Jets as right a now? road favorite. This is not good, dude. We're agreeing way too much because yeah, I'm, I, I know the dolphins are tanking, but they're not going over, right? This is the, the win. Yeah. I mean, it seems as though, a couple of your best, like the coach is coming after the middle linebacker for being hurt. They're trying to trade the safety. They're trying to trade Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, there was that the whole coach weird is thing a with psychopath. the. Uh, he doesn't believe the guy's shoulders injured. He so he's suing the team. The coach is a psychopath. The quarterback is. How would you describe describe Darnold at this point? I, I think he's underdeveloped. I think that's a fair way to describe Sam You're re Donald. redrafting today. Are you, are, is Baker Mayfield still the one pick? Who would be the one pick? Lamar Jackson, right? Maybe. Uh, maybe, but taking? I mean, I, Josh again, Allen? again, if you put Sam Darnold in Baltimore, I think the results would be different. I think it's fair to say Sam, Sam Darnold's had a horrible situation. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I think Cleveland's situation is better. There's certainly way more talent. Uh, Baker Mayfield sucks. That's what we're learning here. Yeah. He'll be out of the league in three years. I think Sam Darnold is still savable. Not Adam Gase, but you bring in someone, and it's tough to compare. But like, imagine, imagine if the Chiefs somehow drafted Sam Darnold. 
No. You don't think we would see a competent Sam Darnold? Like, that guy, at least I've seen moments where you're like, okay, I get it. And and Baker had it, too, for a little bit last year. You are a maniac if you're betting on the Jets here, right? I mean, again, I prob- I'm going against my own words here, fading this recency with the, the look-ahead line disparity, but... I, I, well, the, Sam Darnold as and, a road favorite, and maybe well. this is a similar situation to when we talked ourselves into betting the skins minus three and a half in Miami, you know, not too long ago. Yeah, doesn't this true. seem like a similar situation? It, I think it's a better situation because the Jets. I just I could see us. I see many situations where they're not trying hard. They're not. Not to mention, Sean, Dolphins have lost ten straight to the Jets. Yeah, they're due, man. They're due. <laughs> Indy heads the Pittsburgh. The Dolphins are due. Who's also coming off Monday Night Football. This look ahead was one and a half. The spread is one and a half. Minus 120 on the money line. Steelers plus 100. 42 and a half is the total. See, I, I appreciate this Steelers team. Mason yeah. Rudolph, that's all. That's great. But isn't now this becoming where it's like a little bit disrespectful? Because uh, the Colts are a real team competing for the playoffs, and the Steelers are a team with a backup quarterback, right? Backup quarterback, but the backup quarterbacks have been four and one ATS. So uh, that's they've kind of held the ship down to to a certain degree. And I guess the one non cover was uh, last week against the um, against the uh, Dolphins. But the 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 thing with the Steelers is very good defense, right? Uh, with the exception of kind of how that Miami game started. And a lot of that was the turnovers um, by Hodges. But I I think that's why I like the Colts. I I think they can figure out Hodges. Um, Yeah. Why? I I know the Steelers defense has been pretty solid, but I don't know, man. I mean, this is almost a pick them. Don't you just pick the better team here? Is Indy going to be so out of sorts against this Pittsburgh team? I mean, you're talking about Mason Rudolph, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think the, the the this is a situation spot. You, you would you would look to the fact that it's an indoor team going to Pittsburgh, the long grass, the outdoors. I believe they've lost nine out of ten uh, in Pittsburgh. You also have a situation where, although seventy five percent of the tickets are on the Colts, only half the money. Mm. So that that's one of those areas where I Pittsburgh playing well at home. This is yeah. a very important game to them. And maybe that's the biggest piece of this narrative. The Steelers are not. I mean, if go, go look at the AFC standings right now, Sean. Yeah, they are not out of it No, especially if the Which Ravens in, lose to uh, New England this week when. But right, they're in no the wild thing. card. Yeah, no, I mean. Eight and eight, nine and seven could definitely make it. Colts are coming off a big divisional game. I'm going to, I'm going to take the home dog here. I'm taking both the teams coming off Monday night football. I don't know if I like that, but because I I can't imagine they're both going to get it done, but it does feel like the Colts are coming off that, that, uh, that big game. Actually, wait, who did the Colts have last week? It was my note incorrect there. No, they had the, they had the Raiders. Yeah, it wasn't a divisional game. No. Ryan, you ever think about starting your own business? Of course you have. <laughs> it's called the Sports Gambling Podcast. What if we, or you, wanted to branch out and open up your own sports book? It could be overwhelming. What am I going to do? Come up with the lines myself? No. That's where Ace Per Head comes into play. They're here to help kickstart your own sports book business. It's pretty easy. Sign up over at aceperhead.com. They they set you up with a website, professional looking website. They got all the lines going. Very sharp lines. Some of the sharpest in the industry. Updated up to the second. Wagers graded immediately. If there's any sort of issues, they got 24-7 customer support. Plus Ace Per Head. If you sign up over at aceperhead.com, use our promo code SGP, get up to six weeks free. It's a nice little cushion to get your business started. 
They uh, take uh, payment in uh, cryptocurrency as well, make your life pretty easy there. I think they even get a little discount for crypto. Plus, if you're setting up your online sportsbook through Ace Per Head, they got live betting and an amazing mobile experience. Everyone's using their phones uh, these days to play some bets. You want to get in involved on that trend. And again, check them out. Aceperhead.com slash SGP. That's aceperhead.com slash SGP. Don't beat the bookie, Ryan. Be the bookie. Aceperhead.com slash SGP. Just to be clear, you took Colts. I took Steelers, right? Yes. Cool. Moving on to the afternoon games. 405 on the East Coast for those who don't like when I say 105 on the West Coast. The Lions head to Oakland where the Ra- uh, the Lions were one point favorite on the look ahead. Oakland is now a two point favorite, minus 125 on the money line. Lions plus 105, 50 and a half is the total. They use some dude named Trey Carsons to run the ball. What the fuck was that? Uh, Detroit's a good team. Right, mm. they yeah they let the back door open against the Giants, but like you said, they they there was never a doubt there, and unless we think that Oakland is a real team, we got to get our shit going mentally. Stafford beats bad teams. Yeah, but I I don't I don't know if this Raiders team is that bad. I think they're quietly a little bit frisky. Waller having a great season, forty six catches. 496 yards, three touchdowns. The Raiders offensive line, a little banged up. And, and and Detroit, I guess you could say they they shut down Saquon Barkley, only 64 uh, rushing yards. He did all right through the air. Yeah. Josh Jacobs, I think, uh, might be able to do something at home. Uh, I kind of like the Raiders here. I, I, I think this is the time. I haven't got a good handle on this Raiders team all season, but I think Whoa. this is the time – to bet on the Raiders. There's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of turmoil in Detroit, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm going to take the Oakland here less than a field goal. Uh, that's uh, flying out to Oakland. I, I think, I think Patricia and uh, John Gruden are both kind of like coaching from the same uh, book. Right. But maybe John Gruden's like a, John Gruden's like a slightly more experienced and slightly smarter uh, Matt Patricia. And I mean that as the insult it is. Uh, so give me the Raiders, though, minus two. I, I, I got to win one of these Raiders picks. Yeah, they got their own special bus. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I'm, I'm going I'm going to take the Lions. I, I do think I think I, I said it before the year. I thought this Detroit team would be scrappy and they'd win some games. And granted, this is a non-conference road spot. But this game, uh, the Raiders are in it. Uh, th- this is a. Uh, I feel like this is maybe, uh, you know, some other teams, the season's on the brink, but three, three and one in the NFC, this is a must win game. I think Oakland gets up for this game. Uh, Battle between two, uh, two awesome cities, Detroit and Oakland, Tampa Bay heads to Seattle where Seattle is a six and a half point favorite minus two fifty on the money line, Tampa Bay plus two ten, fifty one 51 is the total. You told me last week, Sean, you just can't bet on Tampa Bay. Who are you taking? Give me the Tampa Bay Bucks all day. This, uh, I, I think, uh, I forget what his Twitter handle was, but like gang green something or whatever. He tweeted out a great stat. The, the Seahawks Owen four ATS at home. Their average margin is a uh, negative four and a half points per game. Two home wins. One of which was just a one point win over the Bengals. The Seahawks team has quietly just not been that good at home. They used to be dominant at home. Uh, they, they lost to the saints. Um, you know, they had that one point win over the Rams, but I mean, did they look great doing that? I don't know. That game was, you know, Thursday nighter. They got worked by the Ravens and their passing defense is really bad. It's just bad. I mean, Matt Schaub, 467 yards and, yeah. I, and I, I know passing yards is a trash stat, but there's gotta be something there, right? Like something's just not right about this, the secondary. Um, and Arians clearly just has Jameis Winston's back. You got the dueling Godwin Evans games that are just going off. I think Godwin's 
um, going to be the guy who has the giant game this week. And last time the Bucks played on the on the West Coast, big upset win against the Rams. Possibly a similar situation here in Seattle. I mean, w- w- Jameis. So here's the thing, right? Because they probably still have a three and a half point home edge. So on a neutral site, what do you make this? Mm. Are you really still making Seattle a three and a three point favorite on a neutral? It's interesting. I, I, I just think also there's to me, it's less about that. It, it's just like a, their passing defense is just so mm. bad and the bucks really can throw it. it. It's, I mean, it comes down to, will he throw it to the right team? I think. And at six and a half, would I like a seven? Am I going to be able to get a seven? I don't think so. I think this. It did. It did move from six to six and a half in the last couple hours. So maybe a seven is not that far out. I think it's going to go back down. I'm seeing if I look out in the wild, I'm seeing I while it opened at five and a half. It has come up. I think it's going to come back down. I think people are going to see what you're seeing now. Granted, Seattle offense is the only truly elite unit on the field, but. We've seen the Seattle team repeatedly. Big numbers aren't something that they're, they're, they're interested in covering this year. Last week, great example of that. Meanwhile, Tampa Bay, they're not quitting until the very end. And if Jameis can just not turn it over, which maybe that's the foolish thing here is we're going to we're gonna go back to that well. We're going to take the points with Tampa because if you evaluate these teams without the ridiculous turnovers, this should be a four-point spread probably. But the combination of records and the fact that Jameis can't can't seem to not throw the ball to the wrong team, it could be it could be a motivation thing for the Bucks too. But uh, I I don't know I, I don't think they're gonna have that problem. Like Arians get these guys up for the games. It well, seems. they're they're gonna rally behind their uh, their GM. Oh yeah, I don't know if you saw that. Uh, it was like over on uh, all over the internet. But the dirty sports guys revealed that uh this at Jameis one for one like twitter handle that had just been like crazily uh pro Jameis winston was like a burner account for their general manager which is pretty (laughs) pretty hilarious and it's looking like uh just looking at the money breakdown for this game sean 40 60 split on the tickets 40 percent on tampa but 70 percent of the money on tampa Mm. that's a pretty despair hell yeah some sharp money it's a pretty good spread right there big tickets coming in fellow fellow other big uh big movers it's a baby fucking wheel man but why do it why do this to yourself why (laughs) bet on Jameis winston i know go through that well, you teased Jameis Winston last week, Ryan, and you bet you bet him as well, right? I I know. I keep going to the well. I'm not the one shamefully not going to that well. <laughs> I go to that well, and I'm going to continue to go, go to that well. I, I have him in way too many fantasy squads. Like I'm way too invested in fucking Jameis Winston. Sean, Cleveland heads to Denver, where Denver is a three-and-a-half-point home dog. This opened as a one-point. Uh, on the look at plus 150 for the Broncos on the money line minus 185 for the Browns 39 is the total I want no part of this game I I want no part of this Cleveland team are you kidding me yeah, ba- but- Baker Mayfield stomping off with his toys they suck Freddie Kitchen sucks yeah Joe but- Flacco is not four and a half points better than any quarterback on the planet period they have a good running game they're a defensive coach team they're gonna pound the rock they're gonna play a little bit of defense against a team that but struggled isn't that, isn't that what isn't that what cleveland can do because who is who's the best player between these two offenses it's nick chubb right and and is that's, it yeah is it I'm, would you? I'm taking the denver backfield freeman and no, Lindsay wh- over you can't take over, two players over one over guy. over the backfield and I'm saying I'll take the Denver running game in this matchup I mean Nick Chubb's pretty good but again they don't seem to know how to use them it's crazy because they have Landry and Beckham and they keep trying to run this high-powered passing offense and really they should simplify completely have Chubb be the focal point through the offense let Baker uh do play action move the pocket for him let him create plays outside of the pocket Vic Fangio starting to have it going they're number three defense DVOA that's true and they they just played well defensively uh and maybe uh maybe Brandon Allen 
is the uh the Joe, <laughs> Joe Flacco's not four and a half points better than anyone. I'm always worried when I don't know who the starting quarterback is. I have to Google him. What and college did he go to, Sean? Arkansas. Mm. And uh <laughs> You know, Denver Post, it's like, so who is Brandon Allen? <laughs> like, I'm always Shit. worried. I'm always worried about taking those kind of quarterbacks. But you could say the same thing for who was Gardner Minshew well, uh, well, until they come in and, and look good. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go Broncos with you three and a half. But this is a this is perfect uh, candy nap. Like, I'll, I'll miss like, uh, you know, half of the second quarter and a little bit of the third quarter of this game dozing hey. off. It, almost 90 percent or sorry 80 percent of the tickets on the browns i just if you're following the browns how can you possibly want to lay points with them yeah in no, a, i'm not in a, in a tough road game i i don't think so i'm sorry next up sean the green bay packers they head to los angeles where they'll surely be the home team in the what, what do they call the stadium now bb and dignity Bank. health uh, <laughs> sports park baby there you go Packers laying four minus two Oh five on the money line chargers plus one seventy forty seven and a half 47 and a half is the total. Oh, poor, poor chargers, right? Wizen hunt out. Yeah. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Well, Talk I'm going to take it, it as a good thing as a guy who has Austin Eckler, um, because I think that's the guy that you need to run the offense through right now. Um, until you can kind of figure things out. But I, I, I would say a huge plus for the Chargers, getting our boy back, the BTC beast, Russell Okun. Uh, he got the blood clots sorted out, and uh, he was a huge difference. And a reason why the Chargers won, I think, is uh, getting Phillip the offensive line. It's so tempting to take Chargers as the home dog here, but they're just horrible. Uh, <laughs> at, at home against the spread, Six and thirteen ATS since they moved into that new stadium. They just I, I'm not taking them at home. And you could say, Oh my god, Sean, all the public's on yep. on the Green Bay Packers. Everyone their mom is betting the Packers. Well, me and everyone's mom is gonna win a ton of money on the Packers because there's no way the Chargers are winning and are covering this. Devontae Adams is getting back. It, it's and I, I tweeted this out or mentioned it on the pod so weird to fire your offensive coordinator after a win yeah. I, on the road against a tough defense, a non-conference road win against Chicago's defense. And you can say what you want about Chicago's defense, but they won. Yeah. And then you get fired. It's, it's weird. It's, it's perfectly the chargers. Uh, Devonte Adams is, is going to be back. It seems like that's huge. Um, the chargers just have too many injury concerns. I, I want them to involve Eckler more, and I think he could have some moments. But, um, yeah, you got to take the Packers here. It's it's an awfully tough spot for this Chargers defense to be in. And uh, I think that's maybe the big surprise is that defense for the Chargers is not very good. 27th DVOA, Sean. They missed Derwin James. Uh, b big time safeties can, can really affect defenses. We've, we've seen it with Earl Thomas in Seattle. And I think we're seeing it here. You you nailed it. I mean, it Green Bay, it's it's getting cold. People are gonna travel out to Los Angeles for this game. Uh, you nailed the the home team point. They don't have a home game here. And uh, the la the last thing is, I, I just it, it looks off, right? Like they're they're forcing it with Melvin Gordon, uh, Keenan Allen. There's been some chemistry problems there. I really like what this Packers team is doing, Sean. And I don't, I don't want to brag. But I also went to the future. I went to Future Shop in a couple weekends mm. ago when I was a little bit under the influence. <laughs> uh, Packers, I have them ten to one to win the conference. Ooh, okay. Twenty to one to win the Super Bowl. All right. That feels nice right now. I don't know what the updated odds over at my bookie. You're just AGR. upsetting the the Bears fan, Ryan. I know. Why'd all, you do that? I'm all in. I'm all in on uh, our boy Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I'm, I'm laying the points. Sunday night football. It, did you have any other points about the Green Bay Packers? No, I nailed it. Yeah. Patriots head to Baltimore, who's coming off. Both teams coming off the bye get extra rest with a night game. Baltimore coming off the bye. They're hosting New England, where they are a four-point home dog, plus 160 on the money line, minus 190 for the Patriots. 45 and a half is the total. Are you getting in the way of FU mode? No, 
I mean, New England, I've been throwing them in my, my bookie super contest every week. Cause they just, this team just covers spreads and you could say like, Oh, well, Harbaugh has extra time to prepare. Yep. Yeah. So you think, you think Bill Belichick was really thrown off by that week he <laughs> put in preparing for the, uh, for the Browns. I love, I love uh, Belichick under against a second year quarterback like Lamar Jackson, that the, the, the Phil's the film on how to beat Lamar is kind of out there if you're smart enough or if you're playing him for the second time, which I think Belichick is. Are they smart enough? The Patriots? Yeah. Um, New England's offense has struggled, but I think they're actually going to be okay against this Baltimore defense. They got Sanu. They were figuring out a way to get him involved. Brady, historically, Sunday night football, ATS, Beast, 20 and 11. Um, I, I just like fading – uh, Lamar Jackson in a primetime game here going up against this New England defense. Who who have the Patriots played that ha- have a top running game? Steelers, week one? No. Dolphins, Jets, Bills, Redskins, well, Giants, Jets, no Saquon, Browns. Browns is probably the team, right? Yeah. How'd they do against the Browns? Uh, they covered 13 and a half. Ch- Chubb got loose. Yeah. Chubb, Chubb had some success. I think this Baltimore team will have success running the ball. I think this is very similar to when oh, they played the this. Chiefs. I'm going to take the dog here. Baltimore historically plays New England well. They have, they definitely have skeletons they do, but this in is, their closet. This is a historically good defense. A defense that's historically s- good scoring, against the pass. Scoring more touchdowns than they're allowing. I don't know. I, I hear you about the one-dimensional. If they can make uh, Lamar one-dimensional, uh, they – I also have, you know, I'm with you. I have some belief that they can shut down Lamar, but I like that this is in Baltimore. I think Baltimore is a great team in Baltimore. I think Harbaugh is a great coach off a of bye. Mm, love that you're on Baltimore here. Situationally, this is a dream spot here because what we haven't seen yet is we have not seen someone take advantage of the fact that Tom Brady looks very mediocre. I think that happens in this game. I think – Dare I, I I'm gonna make a prediction, Sean. I don't do a lot of these injury predictions, but I'm a, I would be worried about Tom Brady if I was wow. a Patriots fan. It's a baby fucking wheel, man. Earl Thomas, he hits hard. He hits hard. Lower extremity, I'm calling no. it. Monday They're gonna win by fourteen. Monday night football. The Dallas Cowboys head to the big city to take on the New York Giants, where the Dallas Cowboys are. Cowboys 0 s- 1 in MetLife Stadium so far. 0 and 1 MetLife Stadium. There are seven points. They are a seven point favorite, minus 330 on the money line. Giants plus 270. 48 is the total. Uh, somehow this the look ahead was seven and a half, and it came, it came out of seven. Uh, Why? Because they saw the back door that. Uh, found against the lions i i I, i'm not gonna take the cowboys as a uh road favorite here although i man off the bye jason garrett off the bye zeke's that's a negative right (laughs) zeke's gonna go off is he Uh, yeah why would he not the the giants defense is really bad and the thing is you can't even really it's tough to evaluate oh stop it uh it's it really is tough to evaluate (laughs) because he's not a lot of the, his playing time isn't in competitive game situations. Uh, oh, here we you're go. You're down like two or three scores. It's, it's really go. hard to evaluate. Them. Here we go. Uh, that being said, I will take the giants plus seven. Oh no. Maybe Leonard Williams does something for him. I, I think as a giants backer here, fleece the jets. I like that as a jet. I mean, they probably uh, overpaid, but, um, but get the fuck out of here. I do like uh, I do like Saquon's matchup here. And how do you beat the uh, how do you beat the Dallas Cowboys? By uh, I mean Aaron Jones showed you right a super uh, like an athletic running back like Aaron Jones, getting Saquon going in the passing game. Um, I am worried about the Giants' offensive line, Danny Dimes, the turnovers, the turnover margin. Again, this feels like <laughs> another backdoor opportunity. Prime time, Jets. baby. We don't know what Danny Dimes is like in prime time. I can have a we? guess, but I, I'm, I'll give you the, uh, I'm just not going to pick the Cowboys. Yeah. It, Cowboys also getting two third or three quarters of the money. So what else you get? Barkley's going to have a big game. 
They're going to show up. Leonard Williams is going to make all the difference. <laughs> what else do you uh, want me to say? Yeah, I'm just not taking it. Cowboys probably should be favored by two touchdowns, right? Mm. That's it, Sean. We made it. We yep. made it. 14 games this week. Mm. We agreed on a lot of games. No, we didn't. Mm. Did it Did it get better at the end? Yeah. Oh, well, you, you, I'm, I didn't fill in you having the Giants, but we disagree on one, uh, two, three, four. That's, uh, you know, it's almost four out of 14. That's nothing, dude. That's nothing. It's All a right, decent let's percentage. Go. Let's do it. Now to present the Happy <laughs> Lock, Dog, and Tea is presented by MyBookie.ag, promo code SGP. Kramer, why don't you kick things off this week? What? what why are we? Do, why are you mixing it up? Because I'm zero and two in my past locks. I need to get hot again. I'm just, Eagles just played a good I'm just game. Just meandering around. I'm meandering around five hundred. I need. I need a little lock mojo. The lock mojo is not impacted by what the Eagles do. Are you sure? Positive. Okay. For my lock, Sean, I, I have a feeling I know where you're going. Mm. But I, I know where I'm going, and I'm going right. I, I won't lock up your Eagles. Let me scratch that. I don't want. I don't want to screw you up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lock. Why are you up. putting that on me? I didn't. I didn't. Say no, no. I, I I felt it. I felt it coming. Uh, for my lock, I'm just going to keep riding this train, and yeah, the Chargers. Maybe maybe they'll bite me in the ass here, and they'll cover this. But I'm going to take the Packers. They're going to be. They're going to have a home game. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be like 80% Packer fans. I just keep coming back to this game and just usually my instincts will tell me, oh yeah, we're, we're going to take, we're going to take a gross public favor here. I'm going to take a gross pe public favor here with Aaron Rodgers. He's just, there's a tiny bit of that. We've, we haven't spoken about it in a while, but that, that, that preseason chugging incident, total mm. FU mode. Uh, I think he, uh, I think he closes the loop on that down in Los Angeles for my dog. Give me the Baltimore Ravens plus one sixty. They give, they not only do they give the Patriots such their, a horrible pick. Not only do they give the Patriots their first loss, they leave the San Francisco 49ers as the only unbeaten team. Mm. And for my tease, give me Detroit up to eight. Give me Jacksonville up to eight and give me the Pittsburgh Steelers up to seven and a half. Hmm. All dogs in your tees, Ryan. Is that scary? I'm teasing up for some teasing for up some that could be a scary endeavor. I, I le just for the right. I left the Vikings off because I feel like I don't want to spoil the, the numbers with the tease that isn't possible. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. What am I going to do here? Hmm. All right, I'm looking at – you know what? I'm going to keep it simple. New England, minus four. Oh, wow. Going against my dog. Going against your dog, which will be a loser. I, uh, You know what? And give me Washington, plus 350. I'm going big dog here. Big dog or go home for my tease. Uh, let's get it to uh, Green Bay, plus two. Also throw in um, throw in San Francisco minus four and a half. And uh, why don't we close things out? I don't, I don't want to throw. Jam Do I throw Jameis in the tease? That's mm. that's kind of wild. I cashed it last week, but dangerous. Yeah. And it is a little uh, look out aspect. And why don't we throw in? I don't want to put in. Uh, I'll throw in Philly plus one there for the tease. All right, that does it for this week's edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast. Why don't you hit us up on Twitter, at Gambling Podcast. But more importantly, rate, review, and share on iTunes. We're five ninety nine, mm. but I, I think we're I think we're probably over six hundred. Again, there's a little bit of delay. Five dollars and ninety nine cents for all these picks, Sean. For all these picks. Wow. No, it's of course completely free, like everything we do here. We don't sell picks. We make them at the Sports Gambling Podcast. Appreciate you guys tuning in as always, rating, reviewing, sharing, spreading the word. Come on. 
Uh, oh. groom, groom your balls, manscaped.com, promo code <laughs> SGP, or uh, try out Ace Per Head. Get that sports book going. Aceperhead.com slash SGP. And, of course, we will have the lock challenge. We'll be tweeting that out and uh, retweet that tweet to be entered in for a chance to win $100. We've on a nice little run here of uh, paying guys 100 bucks a week. So tune in there for the uh, pregame Periscope to hear the winner, 9 a.m. Pacific time Sunday for that pregame show and for the sports gambling podcast i'm sean stacking the muddy green and he is ryan good luck to you and the new england patriots sean kramer let it ride